I'm not really in the mood to give them the tech news Why? today. I don't feel they've earned it. What? But they love you. Show me you deserve it. Wow. Do a dance. Sing a song. I'll wait. Okay. No, that's fair. Wow, that's actually really good. <laughs> Microsoft's Xbox streaming stick is back on the menu as they've recently confirmed they're heading back to the drawing board, ditching last year's design in favor of a new approach for delivering Xbox cloud gaming to users around the world. A Microsoft employee confirmed that they were working on their new device, codenamed Keystone, not to be confused with the oil pipeline. Sweet, sweet oil. The Chromecast-like streaming stick aims to bring Xbox gaming to not only those who can afford an Xbox console, but to any and everyone who can afford a high-speed broadband connection. A little bit broader. The streaming stick is Microsoft's push to deliver a more consistent and accessible cloud gaming experience and should be available in the next 12 months. Plus, it sounds so much more cozy and, and friendly, you know, to say you're cloud gaming, mm. especially when you're teabagging your enemy's corpse in Valorant. Mm. It's so relaxing. I play the game to relax. AMD has corrected some power specifications for its Socket AM5 for Ryzen 7000. The company announced that its 5 nanometer Ryzen 7000s would have a 170 watt TDP and PPT, which is the highest power the CPU can pull under load. That wasn't great news for AMD fans hoping for ultra powerful new Ryzen's that would blow Intel away. Oh, geez. But it turns out AMD made a little mistake. Well, well, seems they bleed like the rest of us. Good thing Dr. Sue is a doctor. She's gonna patch things right up. AMD issued a correction stating that AM5 supports up to 170 watt TDP with a PPT up to 230 watts, which appears to be more in line with what people were expecting. That's a big PP. This should of course enable considerably more PP, excuse me, performance for high core count CPUs during heavy workloads. So calm down angry nerds, you can put your pitchforks away at least until someone on Twitter gives a hot take about Morbius. Strange, don't you say it! On that subject, Twitter has been fined $150 million for misusing two-factor authentication data. Is nothing sacred? The social media juggernaut was fined by the Department of Justice after it was found that they violated an FTC order from 2011, which banned the company from deceptively misrepresenting its security and privacy practices by collecting and profiting off of users' data. Oh, we love doing that. Elon Musk tweeted out, if Twitter was not truthful here, what else is not true? other than my fake offer to buy the company. Could be a simulation. I mean, who would think that a company that makes most of its money through advertising could be so shady with people's personal data? You must be kidding me. Ha ha! Twitter is alleged to have misused phone numbers and other sensitive information to target advertising at its users after telling its users that it would only be used for security purposes, at least according to the claim. The good news is that I'm sure that this fine will deter Twitter and other multi-billion dollar corporations from continuing to run rough shot over people's rights. The system works, doesn't it? Just a little fun. Just like this guy works. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by NordPass, the service that helps keep your personal info, passwords, payment cards, and more in a secret place where they can feel safe and know that they are loved. NordPass is the password manager designed with cybersecurity in mind. It doesn't just store all your passwords in one place and autofill for you. It can generate new secure ones and monitor their health. Do you use your Facebook account to log into other websites? What if that account was hacked? Eh? Nord researches the top 200 common passwords yearly and monitors for data breaches so you can take action as soon as possible. So check out NordPass and use code TECHLINKED to get 70% off a two-year NordPass premium plan at nordpass.com slash techlinked. And you'll get an additional month for free. <laughs> so. Hi, I'm Linus. Do you have a moment to speak about our Lord and Savior? But quacks. Broadcom has announced its plan to purchase virtualization software company VMware for a staggering $61 billion. The semiconductor giant hopes to diversify from its core business of creating chips, since the deal will almost triple Broadcom's software-related revenue to about 45% of its total sales. It's like printing money. If the Federal Reserve can do it, why not Broadcom? The deal is actually one of the biggest tech acquisitions of all time behind Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard for 68 billion. I'm happy for them, really. I mean, we spend all this time worrying about the little guy, but I'm always down for some good old fashioned consolidation of power at the top. Rumors about new PlayStation and Xbox consoles capable of running games at 8K bounced around the internet this week after a presentation by electronics giant TCL that seems to indicate that such consoles 
models might launch in 2023 or 2024. While Microsoft themselves have confirmed they're working on a new Xbox, many enthusiasts have pointed out that 8K capable consoles arriving next year is about as likely as Amber Heard winning the current lawsuit. Oh, Ouch. I haven't paid attention to it. <laughs> Why I would you say that? Is anyone oh, taking a picture right now? Apple and its suppliers are having trouble meeting production demands for the upcoming iPhone 14 due to COVID lockdowns in China, which may end up delaying the launch of Apple's newest must-have device by three weeks. I, th I say this is unacceptable. You expect me to send mean tweets on the can with a boring old iPhone 13 Pro Max? I was gonna give that one to my dog. I think it's the iPad. Samsung is rumored to ditch the Exynos line of chips in their upcoming S23 and S24 lineups. The Chai Bowl is focused on improving their in-house chipset, looking to release a superior product to the market in the coming years. They have reportedly assigned a dream team to the task, which is Fitting, since you'd kind of have to be asleep to think things will be any different this time. Oh. Ha ha! There's another joke in here. They're always singing the Sam old song. Oh, well, thank you for reading the joke, Linus. And scientists have found a way to grow cells on a robot skeleton. Yes, it's true. We inch ever closer to a time when the Terminator will be thought of as more of a documentary than science fiction. A group of researchers at Oxford University has teamed with a robotics firm where they've successfully managed to grow the cells on a moving robot's shoulder joint, which mimics a more natural environment for the tissue and tendons to move around. Sounds delicious. Sure, there are all sorts of ethical and moral concerns to be raised, but let's focus on what really matters. Fleshlight owners around the world can finally upgrade to a worthy successor. It's been so long. And don't forget to come back on Monday to upgrade your tech news to the latest model. It's gonna feel the same, but uh, <laughs> but it'll look, it'll look way, way more convincing. Better. Oh my goodness. Realistic. <laughs>